Milling Through History presents The Dark Side of Tinseltown. While everyone still continues to talk about the infamous slap heard around the Oscar world, one does have to admit that when we look at modern celebrities today, their scandals are, well, quite simply put, rather tame compared to the Hollywood scandals which had occurred during the golden age of cinema. And so, in looking at these golden age scandals, it certainly shows that celebrities of the past really knew how to make sure that if you were going to explore the darker side of society, they really knew how to explore the darker side of society. And so, let us take a look at these particular events with some of the more notable and notorious events of Hollywood's history. Fatty Arbuncle, 1921. The first major scandal to ever hit Hollywood occurred with one of its most famous comedians, Fatty Arbuncle. While at a party with a then little known actress by the name of Virginia Rapp, the two would proceed to go to a hotel room together, and what happened proved to be a little bit of a mystery. What partygoers knew was that Rapp would scream and would die from a ruptured, ruptured spleen. Now, immediately, Arbuncle was accused of both rape and murder, namely by crushing Virginia Rapp to death. To further complicate the matter, the prosecutor of the case had been madly in love with Rapp, and so sought out specifically to bring down Arbuncle for the death of his lost love. Well, after two mistrials, Arbuncle was found not guilty in a third trial, and was even given an apology letter from both the jury and the judge. However, the results of the trial itself and the scandal proved ruinous to his own career, as it came to a screeching halt, and Arbuncle was never able to recover as a result. Pola Negri, 1926. After the death of Rudolf Valentino, there were many across the country, specifically women, who mourned for the loss of the great Italian actor. Many thought that he was the great romancer of the day, and women certainly swooned and felt themselves losing one of the greatest men they ever could admire on the silver screen. At his funeral, Pola Negri became infamous for staging three different fainting spells. The second one occurred actually on top of his own coffin during the funeral. She declared that Valentino had proposed to her and that she should be referred to specifically as his widow. The third, most infamous of them all, would occur in front of a $2,000 flower arrangement, which Negri had spelled out her name specifically to be seen at the funeral. Clark Gable, 1935. Now, Clark Gable is certainly one of the most romantic leading men of the 1930s and into the 1940s. As such, Gable had an affair with Loretta Young during one of the films they worked on together, and the two would have a daughter. Young would leave the country when she began to show signs of becoming pregnant and then return to America to have her child. After the birth, the child was sent to an orphanage and was immediately adopted by Loretta Young directly after being dropped off. Now, the daughter, who was named Judy, would eventually learn of her parentage when she was 31 years old, but Clark Gable never acknowledged her as her own child. In fact, it was years before even any recognition that Gable had actually sexually assaulted her mother would ever come to light. But by that point, Gable had passed away, and his estate, having ne never recognizing Judy, would never acknowledge that he had ever done any wrongdoing. Judy Garland, 1936. After being signed to MGM at the age of 13, executives immediately chided her on her weight, calling her at one point a fat little pig with pigtails. She was immediately put on a restrictive diet, which resulted in starvation and binging periods. This weight fluctuation would forever haunt her. And at the age of 18, Louis B. Mayer would put Garland on a diet of black coffee, chicken soup, 80 cigarettes a day, and diet pills every four hours to reduce her appetite. Garland's weight was so closely monitored with notes about any weight gain, which would then be sent to executives every time she would ever gain a pound. In fact, any time she put anything into her mouth, a note was made as to indicate exactly what it was she was eating, when, and where. Her diet pill and eating addiction was never broken, and this affected her life 
uh, as her health itself would suffer for the remainder of her days, and her own addictions would spell her own demise uh, at an early death. Hedy Lamar, 1936. During her marriage to munitions dealer Friedrich Mandel, Hedy Lamar is said to have had an encounter with Adolf Hitler. According to Deborah Hill, a, a biography of Hedy Lamar's, it was said that Lamar was forced to sleep with Hitler in order to secure a munitions deal with the dictator. This is, proves to be rather ironic as Hedy was Jewish, but according to her biography, uh, Hitler overlooked this particular fact, mainly because he wanted the munitions to be sent into Germany. It is said, though, that Hedy Lamar did receive a cigarette case with a swastika on it from Hitler. Whether or not this is actually true is up to speculation. But what is known is that Hedy Lamar became a staunch supporter of the Allied movement and would even go on to become a rather integral part of the war effort. Errol Flynn, 1942. If ever there's a man on this list who deserves an episode of his own, Errol Flynn might be the guy to get one. In addition to this, Burt Reynolds may have said it best when it came to the life of Errol Flynn. If you took all of the stories about this man, cut half of them out and assumed they were false, he still lived, lived an unbelievable life. As such, Errol Flynn is rather unique as he was charged with statutory rape of two 17-year-old girls. In January and February of 1943, Flynn was put on trial. His attorney went on the immediate offensive and attacked the character of the two girls, claiming they were notorious for sleeping with married men and working with prosecutors to go after Flynn. He was eventually found not guilty, but the trial did a great deal of damage to his career as a romantic leading man. Ironically enough, however, it was during these trials that Errol Flynn would meet his second wife, Nora Eddington, and following the trials and eventual um, acquittal, Flynn would marry Nora, and the two would go on to have a short but happy marriage. Elizabeth Taylor, 1958. Following the death of her third husband, Elizabeth Taylor was grief-stricken and would find comfort for, in the form of his best friend, Eddie Fisher. Now, as is oftentimes the case in grieving, the comfort would lead to an eventual affair. And this affair was all the more prominent as Eddie Fisher was married at the time to Debbie Reynolds. Now, Fisher chose to divorce his wife in order to marry Elizabeth Taylor, but Taylor was immediately accused of being a homewrecker. Ironically enough, though, the marriage between Elizabeth Taylor and Eddie Fisher did not last, as Elizabeth Taylor almost immediately had an affair with Richard Burton and eventually divorced Eddie Fisher just to be with, Ed, with Richard Burton. Jerry Lee Lewis, 1958. After having been married twice, Jerry Lee Lewis got married a third time to Myra Gale Brown. Now, Brown was his first cousin once removed. And ironically, no one ever seemed to have paid attention to the fact that at the time of this marriage, Jerry Lee Lewis was 22 and Myra was only 13. Instead, they focused on the fact that they were familial connected. Ironically, the scandal did bring the two closer together for their 10-year marriage before their divorce in 1970. Carl Switzer, 1959. Once famed child actor, Carl Switzer had a difficult time making money as an adult, as is oftentimes the case with many children actors. While trying to collect a debt of $50, he was gunned down by Moses Stiltz. At the trial, Stiltz claimed self-defense and was cleared of all charges. In 2000, however, Tom Corgan, Stiltz's stepson, came out and revealed that Stiltz had indeed murdered Switzer. Rumors were circulated that Switzer was extremely unpleasant and the police were more interested in getting the case closed as opposed to solving it. In addition, Switzer's death was overshadowed by the passing of Cecil B. DeMille on the very same day. George Reeves, 1959. After having a party at his house, Reeves went upstairs to his room and shot himself. Now, this is the official story that the Los Angeles Police Department released. However, there's never really been any proof to show that George Reeves actually killed himself. According to those who knew him, his career, which had been flattering, was about to have a positive swing in his, uh, in his favor, as his former show, The Adventures of Superman, was going to be brought back specifically to be placed into color. 
Now, there are three theories which have come out as to exactly what happened on the night of Reed's death. The first is that Eddie Mannix, famed for dealing with scandals in Hollywood, ordered the death of Reeves after learning about the affair that Reeves and his wife were having. The second theory is that Leonore Lemon, Reeves' fiancée, killed him by accident during a fight. And the third was that in 1999, Tony Mannix, wife of Eddie Mannix, claimed on her deathbed that she had arranged the murder of George Reeves. Now, while Hollywood itself is famed for its scandals, one certainly has to admit that when it comes to Hollywood scandals, the ones from the past are far better than those of the present. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.